You have my full support, my respect, and my God. You're probably wondering how I got here. I've wanted a French Bulldog for a long time, but life has been pretty crazy the past few years. With campaigns, debates, and one-bedroom apartment living, I knew it just wasn't the right time. Plus, when I looked at the prices for a single Frenchie being in the thousands of dollars, well, waiting was a good idea. I knew, though, that if I was patient, kept doing my research on the breed, and waited for the right moment, that one day I'd find my perfect French Bulldog puppy. In 2018, I accepted a job as a radio host in Jefferson City, Missouri. Finally, I was able to move out of one bedroom apartments and live in a house with a nice big backyard. Maybe this would finally be the chance where I could afford to buy and take good care of my own little Frenchie. As luck would have it, one of the frequent guests on my program was a veterinarian at the Westside Animal Clinic by the name of Dr. Jill Brady. Dr. Jill and I were having a conversation about pet health tips on the air. When I revealed to her, I was hoping to get a French Bulldog. And not only did I want one, but I wanted to adopt one from a shelter if possible. Good luck, she told me. They're one of the most popular breeds and sell for thousands of dollars. So the chance of one ever going up for adoption as a rescue were between Slim and none. Guess Slim had his day. After the program that day, I received a message in my email inbox to the show. A woman contacted me to say she heard me talking on the radio about wanting a Frenchie, and that two of them just happened to be going into a foster situation in Columbia, Missouri that week. Apparently, a hoarder with a puppy mill had been busted in Kansas City, and these dogs had been rescued and were being put up for adoption. I had to hurry because they were likely to be adopted quick. I sprang into action, immediately calling the foster agency Columbia Second Chance to see if either of them was available. One had already been adopted, but thank goodness another one was still available. Dozens of people had already applied, and I had to get my application in quickly to have a chance. Thankfully, they got back to me fairly quickly, but I wasn't out of the woods yet. The foster agency said that they had narrowed the potential adoption applications down to five, and even though I was in the top five, I still had to meet the dog and foster to test my fitness to adopt the Frenchie pup. My friend and neighbor Penny went with me to Columbia, and we stopped along the way so I could buy the puppy some treats slash bribes and toys to hopefully get a good reaction out of him when we met. When we finally arrived, the foster was still meeting with another couple and I got nervous. What if they didn't pick me for whatever reason. I couldn't bear the thought of having such a huge opportunity to adopt a Frenchie for the first time ever and not getting it. My neighbor friend asked if I wanted her to scare the other potential adopters off. When I first met the Frenchie puppy, he was about as beautiful a dog as I'd ever seen. He was friendly, good-natured, and loved the treats I brought for him. After talking with the foster parent for a bit, it was clear I had done the most amount of research on the breed, and some of the other potential adopters hadn't even showed up to the appointment. One person thought it would be fun to take their Frenchie on daily jogs. Not a good idea for a breed known for breathing problems. I was the only one who knew all the history and background of the breed, and it showed. Still, I had to wait a few days to find out if I was going to be able to adopt him. After just two days, a day earlier than I was supposed to find out if I got him, I got him. Calvin Benjamin Peterson was adopted on July 25th, 2019 at just six months old. A rescue Frenchie. He was perfectly healthy, neutered, and needed only one more vaccination to be completed. What an amazing find. He's already been on more adventures and trips than a lot of dogs his age, and he's loving his new home with me in Jefferson City, Missouri. The neighbors and local businesses love seeing him when we're out walking together, and the gas station on the corner keeps treats for him behind the counter. And since he was adopted, not bought from a breeder, I was able to take all the money I had saved to buy one and spend it on toys, treats, food, and accessories for him. Some of those accessories were great, and I still use them, but some of them were total bullshit. So in order to help you avoid the same mistakes I did when buying products for your Frenchie, I started this website. Frenchies are very unique, and sometimes products that might work for regular dogs just won't cut it for our big-eared fur faces. They've got big, beefy chests and are a lot stronger than many dogs their size. Us Frenchie owners needed a website like this to help our adorably unique puppers find the best products available. Let me do your research for you so you get the good sh** and avoid the bullshit. I hope you enjoyed this story about my Calvin. You should share your Frenchie story below in the comments too, and have a great day.